Coming off the heels of Saturday's all-out pay-per-view, Dynamite averaged 1.016 million viewers on TNT, up 9.5% from last week, highest viewership since the show's second-ever episode. Not the second episode of the pandemic, the second-ever episode. 18-49, to 49, 7th on cable, 0.37 rating, up 2.8% in that category, highest 18-49 to 49 since January 15, also pre-pandemic. Comparing the demo ratings to last week, when the show charted 8th in the 18-49 to 49 with a point three six, uh, women up 14.3%, 18-49, to 49, men 18-49 to 49 even, people 18-34 to 34 down 4.3, teenage girls, I don't have the number here, but it was preposterous, it was up like 125% or something like that, some crazy number, so... Particularly impressive, males 18-49. to 49. It was fourth overall on cable behind two NBA games and the Sports Center. People 12-34, to 34, just shy of Raw this week with a .23 rating. So there's, there's two lessons to be learned from this number. Number one, as we've talked about for weeks now, if NXT and AEW both ran unopposed, whether that's NXT moving to Tuesday or Thursday or whatever... The combined audience for these two shows would beat Raw every single week. And if you look at the Raw number this week, and you consider that next week Raw is going head-to-head with two NFL games, it's only going to get worse. I mean, it's possible that head-to-head they're still going to beat Raw. But for sure, if AEW were unopposed and NXT were unopposed, the combined numbers would beat Raw and probably SmackDown regularly. That's number one. Obviously, that means that there's very little chance that WWE is going to move NXT to Tuesdays. Even though it's better for NXT, you think they want AEW doing a million viewers every week? Of course not. Now, the other thing that I think is actually more noteworthy here is last week's go-home show for the pay-per-view. I thought it was not a very good show. I believe I said I thought it was the worst Dynamite of the year. Now, some people argued that, but I think, in general, the consensus was that was one of their worst shows of the year. And here we are. They follow it up a week later, and this show does a gigantic number. Now, granted, it was unopposed, but one of the keys to this number on Wednesday is the Dynamite show opened at a million, and the quarters were... A million, a million, a million, a million, a million, just under a million, just under a million. And the final segment of Dynamite was the highest rated thing on the show. That match with, with Dustin getting his, his TNT title shot, it was, it was the most watched segment of the show. Do you know how rare it is for the final segment of a wrestling show in 2020 to be the highest rated thing on the show? It almost never happens unless you do, for example... A champion versus champion match or or whatever. So people really, really like the show. And the take home is if you have a bad show here or a bad show there, but in general you're giving the people what they want, that one bad week is not going to kill your product. And it's not going to run people off forever. And they're probably going to come back in, in just as large numbers the following week, maybe even larger. So... Very good number for AEW. It was a very good number for NXT. And we'll see where they go from here. We got whatever's happening next week. I mean, that's one of the downsides to this. They do their biggest number since the second week of the show. And the show ends with them saying, we don't know when the show is going to be next week. It might be Wednesday. It might be Thursday. Pay attention to social media. It's out of their hands. But I guess we'll see. Let me ask you a random Friday question, and I guess everybody else out there listening and all the the Twitch homies and homets and everything, AEW wants a third hour. If it wasn't for the pandemic, we probably would have a third hour of AEW programming already on TNT, and I can see TNT wanting that very much for the demographics that AEW is pulling right now. 
what night would you put that on? And do you think it would actually hurt any, you know, hurt for any reason what they do on Wednesday night already? Do you think they they should spread themselves to a third hour, or do you think? Oh no! Are you kidding me? Are you absolutely out of your mind? No, no. And I mean, any time during the week, not. Oh, on I Wednesday thought you were talking about a third hour of Dynamite. No, because they've talked okay. about doing a second show and having a second hour programming on TNT, and obviously TNT would want that. So, what night would you put that on? But do you think it would take away at all from the Wednesday show? So, Tony Khan did, by the way, note that the network had asked if he had any interest in adding a third hour to Dynamite, and he shot that down. Because, quite frankly, he's not an idiot. So, (laughs) the second hour, I mean, listen, I was wrong a few weeks ago. I said, with with all the WWE over the weekend and Raw, Tuesday just seems like too much. Doing Saturday, Sunday, Monday, too. That's a lot of WWE. I thought that NXT on Tuesday was not going to do well. And you know what? It did very, very well. And as a lot of people noted, you know, SmackDown used to be on Tuesday, and it did very, very well. So I would put the show on Tuesday. I mean, they they wanted Tuesday Night Dynamite. They wanted Tuesday from day one. That's why they trademarked that. And the network decided they wanted Wednesday. But for the for the second show, for the one-hour show, I'd put it on Tuesday. And I don't think it's going to take away from Dynamite. It's only an hour. Obviously, if you had two hours on Tuesday and two hours on Wednesday, I think that's way too much. But a one-hour show on Tuesday and the main Dynamite show on Wednesday, I think, is is going to be a fine combination. But the reality is, Mike, they had the show on Saturday, and they did very good numbers. And so I feel that with the audience that AEW has, a very loyal audience that likes the program... You yeah. probably could put that show on any day, and it's going to do largely the same. Pretty much. And, and you know, it's a, a show you could probably mo- obviously move around a lot easier when it comes to other sports and things like that, because obviously the NBA is on Tuesday for right now, but, you know, it's not going to be that way going forward, you know, for the entire year. So a lot of people are looking at the hat I have on and thinking Saturday 6.05. I don't know if that's a good idea. I think it's a good idea in the fall because the amount of football advertising that you could do to shove people there. But I don't know if that really long term is what you really want. I don't know if you heard about uh, with all of these people now having to do Zoom meetings and do all of these teleconferences that uh, library backdrops have been a big seller on Amazon and in other places. You know, Lance Storm could pull that off very easily, and he doesn't need a backdrop. He could have all of his. Sam, this is not a backdrop, bro. He really was at all of these locations. He was at Cork and Hall doing I'm this saying, show. I've I'm got him a saying. remote. I'd like to see it actually happen from, like, the Storm Library. I wonder if he's got a big den. I could see Lance having that and and sitting in his chair reading his book at night in front of the fire with some sort of Canadian bear rug or something like that, something like that, Manitoba moose trader uh cyrus may have gotten for him or something like that i mean i could see that with lance i'd like to see that be his backdrop to do a show a nice question and answer session with the people 